Hey guys, tonight we're going to be talking about worship. I'm reading this book by A.W. Tozer, a guy from the early or from the late 19th, early 20th century, a minister, and uh, he's. Uh, it's a book called uh, "Designed to Worship: The Purpose of Man." And uh, in the book, I saw this quote, and it just kind of blew my mind because many places in the Bible we see the prophets. They saw God, and they saw around the throne. Angels crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. <clears throat> and so Tozer wrote this. He said, I will never get on my knees and say, holy, holy, holy to that which I can figure out. And so then the Holy Spirit kind of showed me this and it just blew my mind. He said, the reason that all of creation cries, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come is because no one can wrap their minds around him, their entire minds around him. That's where the heart of worship is born from. Jesus spoke in John 4 that the day was coming when the true worshipers would arise and worship God in spirit and in truth. But once we catch a glimpse of his majesty, magnificent, magnific, magnificence, magnificent, his majesty, his awesomeness, and his holiness, and realize that we can't wrap our minds around him, we do like Hebrews 11 does and say, by faith we understand. We don't necessarily understand it, but we believe and we declare that we're going to understand sometime. And then his holiness will be revealed more and more in our worship life will explode and we will live out of our reason for existence, to worship and to adore in spirit and in truth. And so when we realize, like we have become a people who and there's nothing wrong at all with, with worshiping and thanking God for what he has done for us, what he's done for for us through Jesus, what he's doing in our lives, what we're believing him for. But what the prophets, how they worshiped, how Jesus worshiped, how he spoke of worship, how the early church worshiped, it's completely different. It's They praised God for the things that he's done. They, you know, they did that. They thanked him for all the things he's done and was doing and was going to do. But what they did was they had an encounter. They realized the life of God. They they had a face-to-face -face encounter with him. Like Isaiah in Isaiah 6, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. And the angels were flying around with six wings. They were crying, holy, holy, holy. And so when we encounter God, like there's this guy. Uh, his last name is Pascal. You trig kids, if you've got trig or any of those math or chemistry classes, uh, you've heard of Pascal's Triangle, things like that. Well, this is that guy. Well, one night, he uh, was just in his study room. This is the mid-1600s. And the Holy Spirit came and just, you know, he had an encounter with God. And so he wrote it all down. And the word he used the most to describe the encounter was fire. Now... <clears throat> We're not to be like, okay, God, I want you to do this this certain way. We are to always expect and always be ready to worship him because you never know when he's going to reveal yourself, reveal himself to you. We never know. I've never known. People, you know, they've never woken up and it's like, okay, you know, Brother Hagen, he saw Jesus several times. He said he never woke up. You know, he didn't ever wake up in the morning and was like, okay, I'm going to see Jesus so uh, at such and such time today. No. <clears throat> but when we have an encounter and experience with the love and the presence of God, we let that shape us because he is giving us a glimpse of who he really is, his nature, not just his nature and what he does, his goodness, but he's revealing himself to us so that we can see him like for who he is, not just what he does, not his acts, but that we can know him. And this is, that's what Jesus prayed. That was the desire of his heart. That, that's what eternal life is all about. In John seventeen three, Jesus was praying to the Father and said, And this is life eternal, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It's to get to see him for who he really is, to spend time with him, to actually encounter God. That's what we were created for, was to encounter God. He created us so that he could love on us and encounter us. He wants to encounter you more than you want to encounter and experience him and he's just that good that true worship is when we 
just see who God is in spirit and in truth. It's in those times of worship when we just, you know, it's indescribable the things that he'll do and how he will reveal himself. It's his, that's why all they cried was holy, holy, holy. They can't wrap their minds around it. That's why Tozer said, I will never bow my knees to something and cry holy, holy, holy to someone or something that I can wrap my mind around. So we cannot, if we can wrap our minds around God, then he does not deserve for us to say holy, 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 because he's not, if that was the case, if we could wrap our minds around him. But we can't. He said his ways are above our ways, his thoughts above our thoughts. And so we cannot, he reveals those things to us. We have the mind of Christ. He reveals his word to us, the things he does in the spirit realm. But what he's actually doing is he wants us to see him for who he really is. He wants us to catch a glimpse of it and then let the heart of worship, let that heart for him be birthed out of that. And that's really what Jesus came to provide was a life so that you can have a relationship and experience the true life of God. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.